This is Kardec Radio for Teens. And now it's time for Message from a Teen in the Spirit World with your hosts, Mark Smith and Carol Correa. Hello, dear friends. We are back yet again for another message from a teen in the spirit world, the big journey. When we last left our dear Carlos, he had just surrendered to the loving watch care of his beautiful aunt, Eunice. Now we would like to take you through his big journey as he sees himself for the first time in this reincarnation in the spirit world full time. What does it look like? How does it feel? What is this experience like? We are all going to get there at one point or another. So let us take and embrace this opportunity to learn now. The Big Journey Ah, my brother Dirceu, I couldn't possibly tell you what happened next. My dreamless sleep lasted only a few hours because a strange nightmare came over me completely. It seemed like I was wandering around in a dark and indescribable atmosphere. It felt like Mom was bending over me, anxiously calling my name. I noticed her anxious hands touching my face and hair. I heard cries of grief and tried to wake up and get my bearings, but it was no use. I suffered a lot during those moments of uncertainty and affliction. I availed myself of Aunt Eunice, who was carefully helping me. Little by little, while I was feeling tied down by Mom's calls, I got the impression that a higher power was very slowly pulling me out of bed. I understood that I was being held by some kind of sticky substance, like a bird stuck in the brush. I noticed, however, that someone was freeing me, ridding me of a burden, as when we take off a heavy coat. Then, in spite of continuing in the same dreamy atmosphere, I no longer felt Mom's hands, but only Aunt Eunice's, as they warmed my soul. Come on, Carlos, I distinctly heard her exclaim. We withdrew to the doorway. Our aunt seemed quite interested in leaving with me in a hurry. Outside, the moon was shining. I breathed the cool, scented night air like someone who was receiving a true heavenly blessing. So many days had passed in which I had endeavored to get better, but couldn't. Aunt Eunice was lovingly carrying me in her arms as if I were a small child. Although I couldn't coordinate my thoughts precisely, I was startled to realize that we were leaving the ground. Soothed by the caress of the gentle breeze, I didn't know what to wonder at the most, the improvement that had suddenly come over me, or the beauty of the night anointed with fragrance and marvelous light. My contentment knew no bounds. I felt weak, overcome, incapable of saying a word. But I also felt as if I were being carried from the earth to a party in the stars. Every now and then, Aunt Eunice looked at me with her kind and friendly eyes, and I smiled back, content and thankful for the blessing of being able to breathe painlessly and without getting tired. I marveled at the moon-filled airways. Then the dreamlike impressions became much clearer. I was sure that everything had been no more than a fantasy, and that when I woke up, I would once again be in my old bed. How interesting to hear Carlos's impressions firsthand. He describes his impressions so vividly that it is as though we were there with him, holding his hands, traveling through the star-filled sky with him. It's interesting to notice the relationship between, or rather the constant exchange between the discarnate and the incarnate realm. We think that when a person's body stops functioning, 
that they themselves, their true selves, also stops functioning because we can no longer communicate with them in the same way that we are used to on an everyday basis. But thanks to Carlos, we now know that that's not true. That though his body, his physical vest, could not respond, he was very much aware of his family, of his surroundings, especially of the emotions that were sent his way. He could read people's hearts ever more clearly and feel people's feelings ever more clearly. So we know now that physical uh, death or We know now that when the physical body stops functioning, we ourselves, our true selves, our spirit selves, our eternal selves become ever more aware of who we are. And the physical body taken into its proper perspective is a true blessing, but it's seen as more like a heavy coat in Carlos's own words, that we are taking off. And the minute we take it off, we can fly more freely to our true home, which is our home in the spirit realm. And we see how much relief and joy, contentment, Carlos experiences once he can truly liberate himself from a a vest that no longer fit him and become his true self again in order to reach the true home, his true home, our true home, which is the spiritual realm. It's beautiful to see how realistic, real, tangible, and even concrete his descriptions are. I myself could feel his feelings and picture the atmosphere and the scenery. So we know now that even when a loved one makes that transition, that loved one like Carlos is more alive than ever before. This is why Carlos, the spirit dictating these messages, tells his brother, the cell, dear brother, the cell is almost impossible for me to describe what happened next because it was a complete surprise to him that he, upon losing his physical vest, the heavy coat that he refers to, becomes more alive than ever before. This seems like a contradiction to us because no one teaches us that in school and the movies from Hollywood, from television, the plays we watch, the books we read don't address this reality. But whether we address it or not, this is the truth. This is why we have this blast space called Kardec Radio to really uh, shed light onto life as an eternal continuum. And this eternal continuum shows us the blessing of God's love that never ends, even when the physical vest that we kindly wear is no longer functioning properly, God's love still manifests. It's important also to notice that Carlos was never alone, that he had loving hearts and loving arms in the presence of his Aunt Eunice right there with him. So we can love and trust God for his, her wise decisions because God is the source of ultimate wisdom but also ultimate love. Every decision that is made by divine providence is a result of the perfect balance between divine wisdom, and divine love. So we know that even in a challenging situation or a situation that appears to be challenging, divine providence is acting with both wisdom and love. Yeah, I found it, <clears throat> I found it really interesting that when you were talking about a continuum earlier, uh, that 
in a way, there's a continuum of emotions, and that's something we need to keep in mind. And I found it really interesting in the story that um, our the writer of this story is basically telling us when I passed away, I was still confused. I, I was confused while I was uh, while I was passing away, and I was confused when I got to the spirit realm. So in a way, it's the same emotion. It's mm-hmm. continuing, and uh, I we and we're also greeted by the same people that we loved in the in the um, on Earth. In many cases, or probably not every case, but certainly in this case, and that's encouraging to know. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, there's such a beautiful, loving feeling here that only, only, only God would be capable of, of connecting all of us together in this beautiful way. And it it also tells us that what we're feeling here on earth is what we're going to feel in the spirit realm. So this is our opportunity. This is once again, the earth is our school, right? Our school to learn how to better manage our feelings, learn how to... Um, learn how to be ourselves despite the fact that we might have people around us who are telling us what to do or telling us that, oh, you should try this or do that, when in fact we know better ourselves what that our intuition will tell us, what that's going to do to our lives. And it's not, and it's our lives, what we're going to experience here is what we're going to experience in the spirit realm. So in that sense, as spiritists, we have a way of thinking about the world which is much deeper than most people. And we have a gift to offer other people, but we also, we need to learn that um, how we're feeling right now very much impacts our spirit as much as our body. And so this, I don't know, this particular story reminded me of that, the way he was, the way he was feeling when he was carried up with Mm -hmm. Aunt Eunice. he still sort of said, "What's exactly what's going on?" You know, almost like it would happen to us if we were actually, if he were actually right here with us on the physical plane. So this is why it's important, friends, for us to share the message. We have been given the opportunity to understand, not only know, but also understand through the psychographed books such as this one how life works we know and understand that life works in two dimensions so it is a beautiful gift that we can share with others if we can communicate the message in one way or another to our loved ones to our friends to our acquaintances because imagine what life is actually like with the power of knowledge and understanding. What we are sharing with each other right now is an actual power. And this power of understanding life as a continuum can actually inform the way through which we carry our lives. Uh, The fact that we know for a fact, it's it's not questionable anymore because we have tangible proof that that is the case so the fact that we know as a fact undoubtedly that we are immortal spirits empowers us to make wiser decisions more loving decisions more long-lasting plans for ourselves as millennial spirits not as someone who only has literally one life to live so every morning Or every night when we go to sleep, when our physical body rests, let us meditate upon the following question. What have I done to enrich and empower myself as an immortal spirit? Have I remembered today that I'm an immortal spirit? What have I done to nourish my soul? As incarnate spirits at the moment, for those of us who are on the physical realm at this time, we nourish our bodies. We are fortunate enough, most of us, to have meals during the day. Even if we don't have three meals during the day, hopefully we are fortunate enough to have at least one meal during the day. But do we remember to also feed our souls? 
because we are not just a body. We are, as we learn with Carlos, a spirit temporarily wearing a body. So as we end and begin a new day in these two ends of the spectrum here, within the 24-hour cycle that is given to us, let us meditate. What have I done to feed my spirit? I know I have done my best to feed my body. Have I done my very best to feed my spirit? If so, what are some new ways in which I can feed my spirit? Am I ready to try something new? So these are questions for us to meditate upon all throughout this week until we meet again for another message from a teen in the spirit world. But before we close our study session for today, let us say a prayer of gratitude to the Creator for illuminating our minds, hearts, and spirits. Thank you, dear mentors, for this beautiful journey that we're on in this earth, this reincarnation. We bless this opportunity to be here on earth, and we bless this opportunity to be loving, to be kind, to be caring, to be generous, to be always thinking about not only ourselves, but also the needs of others. Thank you so much for our family and for everyone who we come around every day. For these are the people that we have been divinely put in uh, to contact with. And we have a beautiful mission to fulfill on this earth. Thank you, dear mentors, for entrusting us with this mission and help guide us in fulfilling it. So be it. So be it, and we wish you many, many beautiful blessings from our souls to yours until we meet again for another study session with the help of the dear spirit Carlos, our brother in humanity. May God bless us all today and always. This has been Kardec Radio for Teens. Thank you all for listening.